Right now, we are uh, very privileged to have the CEO of Sprout Urban Farms, Jeremy Andrews, with us. Good morning, Jeremy. It's great to see you. Hey, good morning, Tim. Thanks it's, for having me. Usually, CEO is Chief Executive Officer, but in uh, the case of Sprout Urban Farms, it's something else. Uh, At, you're widely known as the Chief Excitement Officer. Well, I don't know about widely, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the myself uh, pointed <laughs> moniker. We're hoping to change that widely part. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of momentum right now for people uh, wanting to grow their own food and eat better food. Yeah, and, that's and you guys, it's not a, something that you guys just started to do yesterday. Actually, you've been at it for a little while now. Right, uh, about 2009 uh, is in fact when we uh, started uh, um, out in neighborhoods uh, connecting with people who wanted to build community gardens on vacant lots. And after a couple of years of um, volunteering, doing that around town with different people, we assembled a network and um, got some funding to do that a little bit more intentionally, to hire some kids to work in community gardens to help build them, help connect them to their own neighborhood, help to connect them to other kids. <laughs> and uh, have them working with kids across town. Um, we, that's, that's evolved over time, of course. Uh, we don't uh, build community gardens anymore, um, but we, uh, we built our own farm uh, in 2012. And from there, we started selling at farmer's markets and mobile markets and our own market, our own farm stand, and uh, we needed more. We, couldn't, we weren't uh, expert growers by any means. And uh, we, so we started making uh, friends with local farmers and local food entrepreneurs, you know, people that are raising bees, people that raise their own eggs, people that raise their own meat. And uh, so we started, uh, we became a food hub before we even knew what a food hub meant. And we were buying and selling local foods uh, across the region. Now that's pretty much primarily what we do. You know, on occasion we get a, um, asked to help out with a community garden or uh, something like that, but uh, our our primary uh, work is connecting you to all the good local food out there to help build the local economy and uh, in economic development. Well, and also community development. It seems like uh, Sprout Urban Farms, uh, you're right in the middle of, of a lot of initiatives that are designed to unite community, build community, uh, all those things. Yeah, that's for sure. That's at the heart of um, our, uh, our origins. Uh, I was a community organizer in town, and so it's, it's really all about um, reaching out, meeting people where they are, figuring out what their passions are, and connecting them to other people, and connecting that group of people to, um, frankly, the myriad of resources that are underutilized and uh, um, not widespread in this community, and we have a lot of resources. I want to make sure to say that uh, we go by Sprout now, not Sprout Urban Farms, because oh, it's, okay. it's a big, long, messy phrase, and Sprout's a little bit easier just to remember. Sure. And so just Sprout is fine. You mentioned that you know you're, you don't really do community gardens, uh, but s since then, now a lot of other people are in town. Right. Uh, it's like yeah, you kind of were an incubator, I guess, with that idea and pulling together some ideas. And now you see more and more of people trying to do this. Yeah, well, I certainly don't want to take credit in um, starting community gardens in this city. Uh, but re, uh, re-energizing that uh, possibility is probably a better thing to say. You know, there's uh, historically eb ebbs and flows of community gardens, uh, you know, going back to the founding of civilization. Um, and uh, even in, in this community, um, back in the 90s, a group of folks uh, with Neighborhoods Incorporated built some community gardens, and then those kind of faded away. And we, we kind of, we attached ourselves to some of those efforts that had, there were gardens that were un, not used, but they were there with fences and beds, and we re reinvigorated some of those, you know, 10 years ago. And so now what's happening is it's been more, um, it's decentralized. There's not a, you know, there's... We didn't. Uh, we weren't in charge of community gardens when we started them. We just wanted to help them, help people start them, help people find resources. And, and some of them are working and uh, still still going. A couple of great ones that I love are uh, the Urbandale Vegetable Community Garden out at Lila Arboretum is an awesome community garden, and uh, they've grown into an awesome space as well uh, with their uh, 365 program and their farm stand. And then uh, the Fremont Garden is um, uh, right in the corner of Fremont and Freelingheisen completely ran by residents, uh, just growing food together for themselves. It's uh, awesome. There's, there's a ton of gardens all around um, 
churches and other vacant lots. In the a, city. a great way for people to kind of uh, congregate and talk and, and chat a little bit uh, where otherwise they might not even never even talk or see each other. Absolutely. Um, uh, one thing that we used to always say is we don't, you know, we don't grow tomatoes in community gardens. We grow relationships. <laughs> and maybe some tomatoes happen. <laughs> and, and of course, a lot of people too are starting to, you know, they get a pot and they throw it on the balcony in their apartment building and they grow some tomatoes out there now. I mean, more and more people are becoming farmers. Yeah, you don't have to have an acre of land tilled to grow food. You can grow it all over the places on eaves troughs hung on the side of your house uh, to grow a little bit of lettuce or up pots and climbing climbing vines, uh, you know, up your railings and have cucumbers hanging, mm -hmm. those kind of things. We see a definite, uh, well, trends are always changing in our society, but we see a definite trend toward people who want to eat healthier food, uh, more pure food, more nature food, um, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so, you know, that kind of fits right in with this. I, I, I'm excited to see the uh, initiative of the Fire Hub here uh, where they've built some greenhouses down on the reservation and are uh, right now supplying fresh food to Athens High School. And the idea is to expand that to other high schools and let kids come down there and see how food is grown. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great thing. Any way we can uh, connect uh, people to local food, people to their food, and how it's grown and uh, whether it's teaching people how to grow or making it more accessible. Um, and or just bringing awareness to the fact that there are people here trying to make a living growing food. And, and what I really want to do is make sure that people know that we have people that are growing food and making value-added food products here. And in order for us to have the kind of unique community that we want to live in, we have to support those things by spending our dollars um, and at, with, with those companies. Sure. And, uh, you know, another trend that has become kind of prominent lately is a lot of people, especially younger people, you know, like to have stuff delivered to their house. And uh, I want to bring up the, the uh, new part of uh, Sprout that uh, is, I think it's fairly new, and, and it is a home delivery, and some people are getting excited about it. We're talking with Jeremy Andrews from Sprouts, and uh, Jeremy, um, what's a Sprout box? Well, Sproutbox is a weekly subscription service, so uh, you might have noticed out in the world that a lot of things are going to subscription services from uh, your television, Netflix, Hulu, um, even Comcast, uh, to uh, uh, food, to shaving kits, uh, and uh, so we started, we wanted to revolutionize uh, our CSA and turn it into a weekly delivery that was completely customized by the customer. You can go on your phone or on your computer and uh, you sign up. There's no fee to sign up. You can you can become a member for free, um, but you have to spend at least $15 a week. And we will uh, we'll send you a uh, link to our store every week. You can go in anytime you want, but we'll, you can go to our store and see what we have available. And then you click on it and spend down your credits. And if you want to buy more, you can. This is not just vegetables. We're not going to send you a box full of kale. We're going to send you a box full of whatever you order from uh, fresh produce uh, that's grown from local farmers, fresh fruits, uh, frozen fruits and vegetables that are grown from local farmers, value-added products like chips and salsa and uh, kimchi, soda pop from Traverse City Northwoods. We have ginger beer. We have um, a variety of breads from Dark Horse Commons over in Marshall and some really delicious uh, snacks like lemon, berry, lemon blueberry scones uh, from Dark Horse. We work with uh, vendors regionally and uh, try, to, try to introduce new products to our customers. We have about 400 members right now and uh, you know, we're always looking to grow that. You have a minimum $15 weekly buy-in. Um, and you can stop and start whenever you want. So say you, you want to start next week, you can start next week. And uh, if you want to stop the week after and stop for six months and then start again, you can. There's no penalties. Uh, it's uh, very much uh, built around the customer. Wow. And, and there's a lot of different ways you, you can get your hands on all of this stuff. Yes, absolutely. You can have it, del you can have it delivered to, to your home if you're looking to, uh, if you want to pay for it to be delivered to your home. If you would like, uh, we, we deliver it to workplaces uh, for free. If you have five or more people at work that want a Sprout mm. Box delivered, we deliver to Kellogg, Denso, Bell's Brewery, 
KCC, KVCC in Kalamazoo. We deliver to Grace Health. Um, we're, we deliver to some schools, Lakeview Middle School. Um, I think starting soon we're going to be delivering to Calhanary Career Center and uh, the Battle Creek uh, Math and Science Center. So uh, wherever you work, wherever you are, uh, we, we, we are looking to bring local food to you, making it convenient. And you have some drop-off points, too, uh, so that you know we could just go to a convenient location? Yes, absolutely. We have some public sites. Uh, a couple that uh, off the top of my head are Cafe Rica downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's actually one of our, um, it's a new one of the newest coffee shops downtown. But they're not just a coffee shop; they make their own cold brew, and they're really like um, um, amazing um, mixologists of coffee. Yeah. And uh, they have a great web presence, and they do their cold brew in our facility at our incubator kitchen. So they're a partner. And then they buy some of their coffee from a roaster that roasts coffee in our facility out in Springfield, uh, a local man named Lee Winkler who owns the Little Quiet Coffee Company. Um, so you can pick up from there. You can pick up from First Congregational Church. Um, you can look at our website at uh, sproutbc.com or joinsproutbox.com and uh, check out all of our offerings, check out our pickup sites and deliveries, and, and check it out for $15. If you don't like it, you can stop, but uh, nobody ever does. And, and you mentioned the uh, kitchen out in Springfield. Uh, that's another place where you can go to pick up the food, but it's it's not a grocery store per se, but you can call and order something and go out there and pick it up. Right, what we like to call it is a 21st century grocery store. You can order your box online and we will have it ready for you Thursday or Friday. Um, during certain hours and you can come in and pick it up um, tr really trying to uh, meet the customer where they are customers are, are ordering shipped from Meyer and getting it at home and we want to make it that easy for them to support local farmers too and, and what I keep seeing from people who uh, I've heard are doing this is that the quality of these products is great that's the number one thing we hear from our customers and uh, and we love that uh, we love that that's what they're saying uh, because that's what we're trying to do uh, number one uh, when we pack uh, even uh, produce into these boxes um, on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, uh, sometimes you can still feel the sunshine from from that from that uh, produce that's been growing in the field that was just harvested that morning, maybe mm -hmm. from Green Gardens Farm uh, uh, right here in town. And uh, so it's it's as it's almost as fresh as getting it from the farm. The only the only fresher you can get is right from the farm. Uh, we're just as fresh as it being at the farmers market typically, and. Uh, yeah, that's great. Do you run into barriers with uh, health regulations and using all these independent farmers? How do you get um, around that? Um, or, or is it, or is the law friendly to businesses like yours? <laughs> um, well, good golly. Uh, you know, I'm not one that really loves a whole lot of barriers necessarily, but uh, I can't say that we've had a, um, the, the health department or the Michigan Department of Agriculture um, put too many barriers in place that aren't necessary for food safety. Uh, we sort of we sort of understand that there's a lot of when when you're delivering and and, and bringing a lot of food to a lot of people, you want to make sure that food is safe. And uh, so we work with both the Calhoun County Health Department and uh, Michigan Department of Agriculture is who licenses us um, in our facility. We connect the Calhoun County Department uh, uh, Health Department to uh, our kitchen users. And uh, certainly there are things that uh, cost money, you know, cost money to do business and that, we, you know, that you have to do to be more food safe. And mm -hmm. we just try to keep up on those things and uh, keep our license and keep our food vendors um, earning dollars every week. Well, fortunately, you know, you're trying to put fresh, healthy, high quality food in the hands of people. And so that mission right there kind of runs uh, opposite of where uh, the health department has to concentrate a lot of their efforts, which are people who, you know, are just, you know, trying to make a buck and they don't care what they sell. So uh, I imagine your reputation, what I'm trying to say is I imagine your reputation and your mission kind of helps you uh, get along with all of these entities. Yeah, sure. Um, and there's, I mean, there's certainly food barriers too. We want, we want, we want not only for us to succeed, but our goal is to help local farmers and local value-added food businesses succeed in their business and their, um, you know, in their livelihoods. And uh, a couple of things that we've done over the years are help to to uh, advocate for policy change locally. Um, qu uh, specifically, a food truck ordinance that allows mobile food. Mm -hmm. We helped uh, get that passed back in 2015. It's still very limiting. In fact, I would love for our commission to look at that and uh, make allow food trucks uh, 
um, in a lot more public spaces besides just one strip on Jackson Street downtown. But it's a start. It's a baby step. And, uh, um, that's and now how we you, have food carts, too, that they yeah, allowed. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, well, they, they food carts were allowed in that ordinance just on that street specifically, though. Uh, they're not allowed citywide yet. Right. Um, they there. should be. Over at the cargo uh, location, too. Yeah, that's uh, a special but, city lot, um, and I'm not sure what type of ordinance sure. had to be changed to allow that to happen. But um, um, Well, that's something to look at then. Yeah, and, uh, that's another way to start a food business, for sure. Uh, Jeremy, I know you're involved in a million different events. Maybe we can have you back real soon and talk about some of those. Uh, but if people want to find out about those events and about the Sprout Box and about all the things you're doing, what's the best place to go? I'd say to go to Sprout BC on Facebook and like us and then share us with all your friends. Uh -huh. uh, also look for our, our event this fall called Tacos and Tunes. Uh, we're going to have a taco competition amongst uh, local food vendors. You don't have to make tacos on your menu, but uh, it might help. And uh, we're going to have some live music out there. It's the September 14th out in Springfield uh, at the uh, at the market. All right. Great. Uh fascinating uh, subject. Uh, good luck. Hope you keep up the great work and we'll have you back real soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tim. I'm Jeremy Andrews, Chief Excitement Officer at Sprouts.